All right, no, we're back for another episode of Dark Side of the Moon, motherfucker. And um, we're talking a little bit of Star Wars, the original trilogy. We're going to a galaxy far, far away. And we're going to get our fucking, I don't know, our force on, get our Jedi on, get our Empire on. I don't know what we're going to get on. This intro feels forced. <laughs> this fucking guy do it. <laughs> That's where the music kicks in. <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah, yeah, man. Finally, a podcast that talks with Star Wars. We're trailblazers. That's what we do. That's what, that's what we're about. Yeah, it's, it's you know what I mean. We're always breaking new ground over here. Yeah. In I mean, this first one only got out of cinema, I think, just five, six weeks ago, and 40, <laughs> 42 years, 45 years ago. And then, 45 years, actually, I think it is, isn't it? 40. <laughs> 77, 22, yeah. Yeah, man, if George Lucas still on the rights to it, it would have been remastered 12 more times by now. Yeah, I know, yeah. Fucking hell, hands off first, I'm saying. <laughs> but uh, tell me, I, I, I'll ask you, I suppose. Uh, you go back, you revisit it. I don't know how long it's been. I know you're a nerdy. I know you revisit these mm. things quite often. But for me, it's been... Actually, it's it's been the first time uh, is that I sat down and watched the original trilogy like that. Yeah. Ever. Really? I've seen these films. I've seen these films a multitude of times, but it's yeah. only when I sat down and watched one, two, and three, and that just that cohesiveness of it that I, I got to experience for the first time, and and also just the true greatness of it as well. Yeah, mm, you're truly great. Yeah. yeah, I think I think I think we could just finish the podcast by saying to somebody like somebody seen Star Trek and goes, "You guys like, <laughs> you guys ever like not hear about like Arthur and the Knights at the Round Table?" Yeah, you just call it like, Star Trek. You fucking uh, yeah, that's what I mean. It's Star Trek meets Camelot. There you go. There you go. Come at me. It's done. Harsh, but also kind of true. But um, it's an all right. We we were, we've been away. We're coming back. We're all like we're kind of mellowed out in our time away from you know what I mean from recording and shit. And look yeah. at us here. We're just a pair of guys trying we're to find a way. Depression. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not dying to slow exhaustion, but whatever. <laughs> um, but like yeah. So. What we've already done in this series, I know it's been a little bit choppy because we took a break because, you know, we're dying off over here. But um, we did uh, the the prequel trilogy, then we did uh, Solo and Rogue One, and now that led us all the way back to the original trilogy. As you said, 45 years ago, these movies came out. And, like, for many, 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 many people, they're their childhood. They're their whole lives that they've really, like, these have created an almost uh, religious kind of fucking fervor around them, these three movies, in a way that few other franchises have ever done. And, like, it, it's crazy because... No we, other franchise, I dare say? Um, yeah, Star like, I mean, Trek's you, nearly, like... Star Trek, yeah, yeah, but the, the, the apps, yeah, like, Star Trek, there's definitely, Trekkies are definitely a real, very real yeah. thing, but... Star Wars, it still just seems to me to edge out just the absolute fanfare. Yeah. It's just so much anger attached to Star Wars, though. That's the problem. But for that's me, like. the anger, anger and addiction. Yeah. And it's a, it's a potent cocktail. Anger and Because dickens. when The Force Awakens was not the first of the newest trilogy. Yeah. Like, I, I got to see in my generation, because I guess, personally, I didn't care much when the, 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 the one, two, and three came out. They were coming out, and that's fine. Yeah. But I was kind of more of a nerd when the, 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 the new ones came out, and I could see, like, oh, like, the lightsaber has a, a heels. The lightsaber has, like, side bits on it or whatever you call them. And I'm like, a hilts. Hilt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm just like, and people, there was, like, debates about it online and stuff like that. And I mm-hmm. remember thinking, wow, to be a fly on the wall before the internet, but when everybody was getting their information through, you know, news and media kind of slowly but surely and the debates that people must have had because this film had, this film was an explosion. Yeah, it's just, that's the, the thing about it, though, like, because they're good films like but, yeah but they're not like i don't understand why there's so much like obsession attached to them like you know what i mean like like the, the original trilogy are fucking good films they are like but some of the writing is terrible in it like some of the like i, I watched them a lot or more like uh, and i generally watch them together i watched them, like last time i watched the entire series was only about two years ago and like Man, the fucking some of the writing is atrocious in these movies. The same, it's the you're same. You're gonna have to, you're gonna have to back it up with one particular, just a particular example of of what you just thought. Like, what the hell's going on? Here? Um, I don't know. Maybe having uh, Leah and Luke being brother and sister after the being love interest for two and a half movies. That's you know this. This film was big in middle America, Bible Belt. <laughs> Give the people what they want. Yeah, but you know what I mean, though. It's just 
I know, like, I just think that, like, the major issue with all the Star Wars movies is the scripts are oftentimes atrocious. Like, like you know, it what I mean? was kind of made by the talent, was like, 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 there was nothing that Harrison Ford could have done wrong. Mm. He took, he took, you know, he just every line he delivered, just yeah. had, he was just so good. I know it's just like don't get me wrong, I love these films, but it just everything's so coincidental. Everything about Star Wars is so coincidental. Like they end up in Tatooine because they're just having to run away and they just happen to fucking find Luke Skywalker, who just happens to know old Ben Kenobi, who just happens to be Obi-Wan Kenobi. Like, you know what I mean? And it's just who said, I need to go into disguise. Yeah. I need to get rid of everything about my old life and change my name. Uh, yeah. Okay, Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> what are you thinking? I'm thinking. Old Ben Kenobi. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and it's the same with the fucking prequel trilogies. Like the like the only reason that Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan Kenobi even land on Tatooine in the first place is because their ship needs to be repaired. And all of a sudden they, they meet not only meet Anakin Skywalker, but Anakin Skywalker ends up trying to be in the fucking chosen one who's like you, you know what I mean? Like just every- yeah, and also the, you know, like but it's, I know I don't want to get ahead because you've done it and I'm about to do it, but like when you look at the we can't train them once they're more than like six days old that's just the way it is you get them <laughs> the force and anything over that i remember anakin was like way too old to train like hey, remember that was the yeah, whole deal with like him. and then there's like luke spends a week with yoda like you know yeah. and then like ray spends like a week with what no one that camera like, no. <laughs> we're hopes yeah hopes um, she's like i'm a skywalker uh, now don't see yeah yet. and oh, god it was but the but uh, you know the Ben, he's un- uh, uh, the uncle that he, that, that uh, Luke was living with. What were it? The uncle and the aunt, or whatever. Yeah, uh, um, uh, uh, Lars. Yeah, I, but you see where he's burnt out skeleton is outside. The, <laughs> I thought that I don't like. I haven't watched this film in a while. I was like, that's dark. Dark, <laughs> that's dark man. Like he he died running. And yeah. He died horribly, and yeah. it's just right there. Yeah. And I was like that. I just remember it being like, because you know, like Obi Wan gets hit with the lightsaber and. Banishes, yeah. You know, there was very little like fucking stupid. overt violence. Tatooine gets blown yeah. up, but we always say this like the genocidal things, there's no personal, it, yeah. it, it's it's just this like graphic, and, and we're told that billions of people are dead, but it doesn't have that darkness that when you, yeah, are we going Stalin again, dude? You actually see it, uh, yeah. So it wasn't a violent <laughs> film except for this one horrifically. <laughs> Yeah, yeah but, we are. That's, 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 I just think that's what think, we do here. Do you think George Lucas is like, oh, I didn't go dark enough with Obi Wan, and then they're like, let's go to Mustafar, and I'm going to show you, I'm going to kill Anakin. <laughs> and like, what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop that poor kid up for a movie and a half, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Like, you mean Luke? Yeah. What did you think of that? Like uh, the, the fucking death of um, Obi Wan, like where he just disappears. Like it's fucking Superman. Yeah, I. I, I you know, I never really, it, it's such a, a fence sitting thing. It was just kind of like the force was this mysterious thing, but like yeah. nobody else did it. <laughs> like, yeah. Else did it. yeah, Yoda didn't do it. Like, yeah. you know? Qui Gon Jin got stabbed. Qui Gon Jin got stabbed. Yeah, you know, Darth yeah. Maul kind of came back fair enough, but he yeah, but got like, cut in half. He never really explained. And, and, he, and then he comes back as a spirit ghost, and you're kind of wondering, yeah, no, it, it was kind of cool though, you know, when like when he's attacking the. Death Star, and you just have used the force. I don't know, like, what was wrong with the actual equipment? <laughs> you know, like, just, yeah, exactly. They've mastered space and, you know, <laughs> like slip streams, and they can travel billions of light years and yeah. all this kind of stuff. And then you're just like, so you have a targeting system. And I'm just like, use, actually, you know what? Use the targeting system. That's, <laughs> that's probably a solid enough idea. Yeah. You know, my, like, I just thought, like, um, about the fucking the force, and it's like that. It was cool that it was like about being one with everything, almost like this kind of Buddhism, like kind of Buddhism. Kind of stuff. I always thought it was closest to that. Yeah, you know, I, I just thought that that was cool. And then they went and then retroactively changed to some sort of biological thing, the Mycloreans and systems fucking bullshit. But like, I just think the major issue is there's always this disparity or like inconsistency with what the force can do. Like, you know what I mean? And how long yes. it takes to master the force. Because huge inconsistencies you there. You know what I mean? No, no, no. You got like there's just there's no debate. And I, I and there are Star Wars people out there who could like read the books, read the comics, mm. watch the films, could debate us into the ground and make us look like absolute fools. I do not doubt that. I don't. But I <laughs> yeah, just bring him up. Yeah. But I do know bring him on, that, that you would have to say that there's like a fair enough, like the Skywalker lineage or whatever is ex- you know exceedingly yeah. gifted and all that. But like 
apparently you have to train them from when they're kids. Yeah. And Luke was like 25. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, like the most 25 year old looking 16 year old. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> um, I but just... Ale- I t- you have to say, Alec Guinness, um, he did bring a lot, he did bring a lot of weight to the character. Even if it was like the lame fight with, with Darth Vader, it didn't do it for me. But I have to say, but he did actually seem to, I don't know, he, he was just one of those actors that doesn't try and chew up the scenery, but actually just has that, naturally has that way about him. Like you probably, could, you know, you imagine, you know, he did a lot of theatre. You're talking just, about Ali, it's Ali Guinness? Yeah. Yeah. I just thought he was excellent. You know, I just thought he just, I just want his people just naturally has it. Like Ian McKellen has it, you know, Patrick yeah. Stewart has it. They don't actually have to do a terrible lot for you to kind of believe them or believe the brevity that they bring. Um, and I thought he was excellent. I don't, I, I mean, you can only, we, we always say this, you can only work with what you're given. If he, the script said that, you know, he disappears, he becomes a force ghost or whatever you want to call him. Um, and that just is what it is. Yeah. But uh, he, I thought he was excellent. Like, you know. Yeah, no, like I, I thought he was good. The, the fight scene was atrocious. I've seen him. The fight scene, and... med, the fight scene, was the whole, like the whole thing is that Darth Vader, <laughs> even the Emperor, could yeah. take him on in a lightsaber battle. <clears throat> you know, like that. His actual <clears throat> specialty is yeah. the lightsaber battles. Nineteen seventy like, sword fights are trash, man. But uh, it, oh god, but they didn't even like they didn't even like one leg behind the other, like parry. You know, yeah. you know but, but, Ah, bah, bah, bah. <laughs> <laughs> they should have just got two stuntmen in there. Like, there's no need to have the old dude doing the fight scene. Like, no, there was you know no I mean? need like, at all. They could have sped that up. Like, that's the one thing I love about the prequels is the fucking lightsaber uh, battles and the jewels. Oh, they were they were they were excellent. Oh man, they're so they were fucking excellent. Good. So fucking good. Anyone and and much better than the, the the most recent trilogy as well. Like, oh, uh, of course. Say what you will about the the original um prequels. Mm. Uh, sorry, the only prequels, I suppose. Yeah. But um, but they they had absolutely excellent excellent lightsaber battles. Oh yeah, Darth yeah. Maul, Darth Maul, Qui Gon mm. Jinn, Obi Wan, fantastic. Obi Wan and Anakin, absolutely fantastic. Mm. General and Grievous and Obi Wan. General Grievous and Obi Wan. Count Dooku and Yoda. Count Dooku, Yoda, Count Dooku and Anakin, Count Dooku and Anakin the second time. Yeah, Count Dooku and Yoda and Anakin, or Obi Wan and Anakin in the first, yeah. the second one. That's well. right, and then then the, the mm. third one. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Yeah, and of course, yeah. Then you had Yoda versus Palpatine. I yeah. don't know if that was really lightsaber. In my head, I can more of a force really. battle, wasn't it? Really? Yeah, more of a force battle, but still, it was excellent battles yeah. between really, and that made the force like this really, really terrifying thing as opposed to. I don't know, feeling really, really connected to like the world around you, dude. You know? Yeah, like I just think, yeah, it's like the first, the the prequels, like the action. And, uh, that I think obviously you're hampered by what you can do with the technology of your time, but like just the fucking way the Jedi's were depicted or portrayed in in the original trilogies, they really can't understand why they are so feared. Mm-hmm. And like, and when it comes to this old dude, and it's like, I get you're old, but like, if Darth Vader's the most powerful Jedi. If, all time, the most powerful Sith Lord, maybe of all time, bar the Emperor, right? And he's fighting this old dude that is the slowest swordsman I've ever seen in my entire life. It oh, yeah, be one, one block could you in half, <laughs> like, you know? What yeah, I, mean? like, I just thought it was crazy, <laughs> you know. But like, like I, I just like the first one's like it's it's clearly iconic, like, and it's got so many awesome scenes. It's got like Harrison Ford, like the cast is ridiculous. Harrison Ford, Carrie Fisher, sorry, goodness, Mark Hamill. David Prowse to play uh, Darth Vader. I don't know if he played him in that one because I know he played him in the unveil him in the third one, but I don't know if Darth Prowse or something. But the problem with it is that like it just is so silly at times. But like as I said, it's from nineteen seventy seven. You said wasn't it seventy seven? Yeah. Yeah, but like like the story itself is just fucking iconic. Like some of the shots as well, like where he's on Tatooine and like uh, after his family dies and he's kind of doing that brooding thing and you see the two sunsets and shit like that. Man, it's like it's fucking awesome. Like the film itself is still fucking gorgeous, but like it, it just amazed me that he felt like he had to go in and change stuff with the remastered version. And like, you know, the whole thing where like uh Hanshaw or Hanshaw first, like and, and like the whole Guido thing that like he felt like he had to, I don't know, make his characters more humane or something. And what, what was cool about Han is that you had this guy that was kind of living on the edge of the law and he's kind of like a good guy if you need him to be a good guy or if you're his ally he's very mm. good guy to you but he can quickly very quickly be a bad guy you know that kind of thing yeah and then when you know and you weigh that up with solo and the in the way we've been watching you see that he used to work for the or fight for the empire and stuff like that that it kind of you know what i mean it shows 
like when you look at solo and you, you look at it in this kind of order that you get to see the backstory and then you get to see like the whole thing like why he is the way he is and uh kira the one that he loved left him and shit like that and you can kind of see why he is the way he is at Leia and shit like that that that's why i think this order works really well but like i just think that when he did the remasters that it was kind of weird that he went back and he, like one thing I showed you in the group chat was like he changed Jabba Hutt from being just a dude to a giant Imagine that poor dude, like you're in Star Wars. <laughs> now you're a slug. Yeah, like what the fuck, man? Like, why do you think he made And did you ever see like in the first remaster where where uh, where Han Solo's walking around him? So like now that he's a slug, he has to stand has to stand on his like trail. Yeah, yeah. And he has to like and it's so badly digitally <laughs> he walks yeah. off and he walks down. <laughs> yeah. So your man, even when he's leaving, he goes, you're, you're a great human being or you're a wonderful human being. <laughs> you're a wonderful human being. A good old bipedal man. That's what I like about you. <laughs> like, yeah. Do what I love about you, Jabba, is your skin. Your human <laughs> skin. <laughs> your human. <laughs> but why did you think he made all these changes? Dude? I don't know. I, I, here's the thing. I, I think when something hits as heavy as Star Wars hit. I, I don't think anyone could have been as... Like, I mean, Carrie Fish, like, we, we talk about our, um, our James Earl Jones, you can talk about... Um, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm trying to think of a guy who played C-3PO and, and, and a lot of these people... Anthony Daniels. Yeah, Anthony Daniels and David Prowse and, uh, who played um, Darth Vader, but not The Voice, and mm. P, um, Peter Cushing and people like that. They, they, they were actors. They were well-known, but like... I, I'm not saying this was the first thing, but Mark Hamill, Carrie Fisher, to a lesser degree, Harrison Ford, they cut their teeth on this. Mm. Like this, this blew up. This was this was an overnight sensation, and people bombarded that poor man for the next twenty years, saying, "But why? But why? But why?" And he was like, "Right, what about this?" And there is a thing where, no matter what you say, you have to understand that people will never be happy mm. with something that absorbs them as much as Star Wars. Yeah, because you'll make one good film and people will be like, do that and do that and do that. Like this film is like the Metallica of films. You know, people are angry at them for changing their sound. And then people are angry at them for making an album that sounds like another album. You know what I mean? It's just, and I I, I do think he's just trying his best. Now, Jabba the Hutt, I quite like him becoming this big fucking slug thing. I thought that was kind of hilarious mm. and getting chalked out by, by the chains. He put <laughs> Princess Leia. Like I'm down, I'm down. <laughs> but, uh, but I do, I, I think that, if I was to make something like this, not that I could, not that I had the talent, it's just a sheer hypothetical. I think I would make it to the best of my ability and then probably delete all social media forever. Uh, I do uh, think that this is just the product of that mean, when mean, is, so. yeah, like when's the film done? You know, do you remember in a ET where they went back and digitally bought walkie talkies and all the cops instead of guns, instead of guns because there's their children. Yeah. But they're also children with a literal extras restaurant. Yeah. Who seems so to be what are you saying? If a kid is with an alien, he should be shot. So I'm saying with the kids with an alien that it's not a normal circumstance and none of them fired. Mm, interesting. I like those bikes. Take, those bikes. I'm thinking like, I'm, like, like yeah, I'm thinking like, forget like if the bikes start to fly. I'm thinking if one of them tries to do a wheelie. <laughs> like, yeah. like, oh, like, oh, you know? <laughs> He's like shoe boating. Ba 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 Showboating child. Um. You know, we have flamboyance here in the FBI. Yeah. But I think people probably got onto about needing more aliens because you do have that scene in the bar where, like, you know, a greater group of scum and villainy or whatever it was, mm. um, Alex said. Um, you never and find there were the so many aliens, so mm. many. And then it gets, like, with the exception of maybe Chewbacca, it's just kind of humans from yeah. kind of that point onwards, C-3PO, R2-D2, granted, um, but, but humans. Uh, so I think maybe he said, like, this is supposed to be a galaxy far, far away. Mix it up What did you think was the best of the original three? Uh, part two. Yeah, it's undeniable for me. Yeah, Empire Strikes Back. I think Empire Strikes Back. That it's just it's actually like an almost perfect movie. Like yeah, you know what I mean. It did. It showed Han Solo at his best because I know the end of the first one shows him as a kind of like. You know, finally believing in something a little bit bigger than himself, but in the second one, the way he saves Luke, yeah, um, from freezing to death, that whole battle. What's the battle called? I'm oh, battle, of, battle of Hoth. There you go. Thank you. That was mm. incredible. I always loved that. Yeah, because it was an excellent <laughs> battle. It was an excellent scale, but they also fought smart as well yeah. as fighting. You know, as well as fighting tough. Mm. Um, the way they took down the walkers and stuff like that, it's just an excellent, excellent the, battle. 18Ts or attacks, as people just call it back in the day. <laughs> um, but like, yeah, what did you what uh, while we're talking about the Battle of Hot, right? In part two, what did you think of the design of 
the Empire's uh, heavy artillery, for lack of a better term. Um, these big, uh, the Atats or at and the, the big walking yokes. Why doesn't anything have wheels? Continue. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and I'm just like, we're walking across like frozen plains. Right. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'm thinking. Heavy steel legs. <laughs> Yeah, like come on, like, like I mean, the, the the surface you could go into the water. He's going, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, are they fast? Do they glide? Oh no, no, fast, fast. No, no, no. <laughs> don't be oh, preposterous. No. I'm not thinking fast. <laughs> <laughs> We're the empire. We don't think fast. We think big. <laughs> like you know, yeah, I, there is no. But also, it doesn't seem like there's any actual cover for the people that are in it. I yeah. saying like there's got an actual open window, <laughs> which, yeah. I, I mean, which is also yeah. great for me. I really think so. Yeah, like it's the the biggest target you can ever present to your enemy. Like the <laughs> biggest target, like, you know slow I mean? and lumbering, <laughs> yeah. but you have to admit it looked cool as hell. Oh, it the first cool time you fun. saw it. Oh I'm, my god! I'm not going to lie, man. As I said to you earlier, like when I was giving uh, complaining about the scripts in these movies, which I, I can say is the issue with nearly all Star Wars movies, but it looked every one of them looked fucking gorgeous. Like that's the thing. That's why they're so captivating. They had this very very unique look about them like as you said it's kind of like star trek meets uh arthurian legend like just the fact that he combined the two of those uh like uh, what kind of aesthetic are you gonna get and you throw in like a heavy dashes of the nazis like that's what you get like you get this kind of like this really cool over industrialized fucking uh mechanized kind of fucking group against these kind of like more like you have the rebels and shit like but you also have this kind of thing that's inter- <laughs> and no just topographic of what uh the 18ts look like with stormtroopers on Who's stormtroopers on stilts that's that's its entire deal yeah. that's all there is to it yeah i just the one thing i i, I kind of love that uh that, and, and obviously it was very reminiscent of world war ii that the the germans and the russians and stuff have very massive things and because the americans um, were importing all their tanks and stuff that the Shermans were lighter, their their planes were smaller, I think in a lot of cases and slower than the Germans. Yes. They were able to mass produce them much quicker. And I think that's what I kind of liked about the contrast of this kind of world. That uh, You had this big, massive, overly mechanized kind of almost ridiculously so um, lumbering like like the empires, what they were. Everything was really slow moving with them and everything was overly done and gigantic and massive. And But with the with the rebels, everything was sleek and small. These x uh, x wings, sorry. Yeah, guerrilla warfare, just classic guerrilla warfare. Yeah, exactly. Just on a, on a, obviously on a plane, on a level, on a level of technology mm. that, 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 that doesn't completely translate, but it's always those tactics you need to, you need to hit and you need to get out of there. Yeah, man, we're seeing it in Ukraine right now. Like, look, we're seeing it in Ukraine right now. You know, yeah. It's, it's yeah, and and, and, we'll, and ten years time, unfortunately, we'll see it somewhere else. Yeah, and, that's and I'm not trying to be glib. I'm not trying to be glib or, or dismissive, by it, but uh, it's true. It's 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 a, and it actually did. I I it's, I seen a clip just yesterday, and it was um the a new uh, sorry the Force Awakens again, but it was uh, a speech been given to the Imperial troopers, but it's actually in German, and yeah. uh, it it hits different. Yeah. <laughs> it has a different flavor. <laughs> yeah, you know, no, but I mean, like, uh, when I talk about what's happening in Ukraine right now, I mean, like, an over mechanized uh, army being sought out and destroyed by a slightly or a smaller, more mobile force. And that's what they were. Oh man, you have fucking tractors dragging off tanks, and I am, I'm, yeah. yeah oh, it's well, I'm talking about drone, drone warfare, like where you have small drones picking off these massive armored brigades. Like, and if you look at the, the ATT when the or the ATA when. The X Wing takes it down. You, you could never imagine an X Wing being able to take down such a massive monstrosity. This, yeah. You know what I mean? But work against its weakness, and its weakest would be its cumbersomeness. It's, yeah. And its legs, it's big, long yeah. ass legs. Big ass legs. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? So I we just should just to... set up the battle on the other side of this frozen river and just, <laughs> just let it play itself out, is my thinking. Like, you know. Like, they've conquered gravity. Like, yeah. they've completely conquered it. You know? <laughs> It makes no sense to me. Yeah, it's crazy. Some of the weapons they use are insane. But what do you make of the the design of the the Tie Fighter? Do you prefer the Tie Fighter or the X Wing? Uh I. You know what? I the X Wing. It 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 has that. Um, sorry, the Tie Fighter has that sleekness. The noise it makes. Yeah, but I I I I think I like. I uh, I think that's just the underdog. The yeah. underdog in me, like. I prefer the X Wing. I actually have. No, I don't have an X-wing. I've got a fighter here. But Sorry, I, uh, actually, I can like confuse them in my head. I meant X-wing as well. Um, 
because the other it had that kind of industrial look. But actually, they were spunky. I dare say, spunky. Uh, uh, yeah, no, yeah, I loved the uh, that style of Finnecam. Uh, something I loved about Battlestar Galactica was the, the Viper ships that they used to use, not the fighter jets. Um, but like, uh, what what did you think of like the design of the fucking the Empire shit and the Rebel shit? Like, did you oh, like the different kind of destroyer? I loved the look of a destroyer. The, the you know Star what? Star destroyer. Yeah, when they show up and they get uh, Leia the first time, and it doesn't even like battle it; it just shows up and like opens up a, a hangar bay, and just like absorbs it. <laughs> yeah, it's so big. Yeah, and um. Oh no, I love that. I I always thought I always thought all the imperial stuff was designed really, really well. It just yeah. had this kind of um, there was no love, there was no personalization mm. or anything like that. It was just it was just uh, standard. Yeah, everything looked the same. There was simply a mission. There was nothing there for personal identity. Ident- the identity it was about conforming. Mm. And uh, their TIE fighters and their destroyers and everything really spoke to that and, and, and also made them look so intimidating because it just looks like this overwhelming force. Well, mm. when you look at the X-Wings and stuff like that, they look like they're kind of like thrown together. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. They just had this like, you could, you could see the mechanics working on them even just before they go out. Mm. Robot hanging out with the back and pretty much or two, like exactly. Or two, but oh, like, yeah, oh, it, I, I just, I absolutely love them. Uh, and even just that battle on... Um, Against the Death Star at the end of the first one, I, I thought that was oh man, that battle is fucking insane. Like, that's a really oh. good firefight as well. Like, you know what I mean? It's like that's and what people, always... and people die. There's, there's a lot of darkness mm. there. Like, mm-hmm. I can't shake him, I can't shake him. And, and, and then he just the red don't... dude, the, the kind of heavy set dude, I mean, yeah, like, the heavy set dude. Yeah, let's not put him in a plane that needs to go extra fast. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, like, but no, no the, the, the planes can fly in space faster because they've got long wings. <laughs> you see. <laughs> yeah, like there's always well, I know it's not like you know what I mean. Like uh there's always one dude that looks like he never belongs in a fighter jet and he's always the guy that dies. Like every single time, like it's like it's like hey, go leader here, uh red leader here, and the guy's like, I'm Harrington. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just this every single day. It's like, oh, Harry is dead. <laughs> Harry is gonna die. It like, doesn't like that. You know, like that. It's like, go commander, go leader, red <laughs> one. Uh, uh, Harrington here. <laughs> I me me and Sheila all have this kind of running joke. Me and my partner Sheila is like, uh, I have a bad feeling about tertiary. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing, though, man. It's like uh, to do that in every, every like, uh, Star Wars dogfight. It's like, okay, we're going to introduce a couple of guys. They might survive an interesting guy. It's like, hi, uh, my name's Bill. Yeah, maybe you'd be like <laughs> Green, Tui. Uh, hi, I just had a baby. I'm just, yeah. you know, just... <laughs> hey, I'm, uh, what I'm doing, guys, right now, check your heads up, please, because I'm about to send you a picture of my family. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the reason I need to live. And uh, <laughs> the reason I'm going to survive this because, uh, oh, wait, there's a tie fire on my back. Ah, ah! <laughs> <laughs> my wife she says her favorite thing about me is my eyes and how i'm not dead yeah <laughs> she says the, the fact that my longevity and my ability to survive things <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's see, that's why i would never be able to make a star wars i like the, the, the complete total abject lack of talent is a big one but also with that that would be the dialogue i would just insist on being in there yeah my wife says, oh no i'm blowing up in space why am i still alive oh no i'm freezing <laughs> and i'm burning <laughs> Oh, but my wife says she told me to come back on this one. <laughs> it's my last mission. Preserve my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> but like uh, one man, like we haven't talked much about Darth Vader and Luke. Yeah, because that's what the crux of it, and that was I can only imagine because we never grew up in the era where they. Mm. The, the the big moment the big reveal we never grew up in that yeah. uh where uh, um not luke i am your father that's so weird isn't the, it the mandela effect yeah it never said uh, there's no i am your father the thing is though man is it mandela effect or is it george lucas effect that motherfucker remasters those movies so much yeah you know, it, it could have been in there <laughs> <laughs> It might have existed at one stage or another. Like, you know what I mean? He just remastered it out of existence. And what's it? Yeah, that he cuts his own kid's hand off. I thought that. No, I thought that was. Ex- unless you lose a hand, man. You're not a Skywalker unless you lose a hand. Keep that in mind, Palpatine. Yeah, keep that in mind, fucking Ray. Ray. Palpatine. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, You have to give a handy. <laughs> this fucking guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought, I thought, like, the, the way they set them up, I, I thought the. Like you have to say, Darth Vader is one of the ultimate <laughs> bodies. He strikes such a don't talk to talk unless you can skywalk the wall. <laughs> oh, I love that. 
Um, yeah, no, he is like the ultimate villain, though, from that era, isn't he? Like, oh, he is, yeah. Mm. And like, you know, when the, the force was kind of like, how strong is it or what can you use it for? When it was a little bit big, he like that uh, Darth Vader chalking bitches out was the one thing that seemed to be assured. Yeah, it's and like, yeah. I'm going to I'm going to go talk to Darth, uh, Lord Vader and I'm going to explain to him how our mission failed. It's cool. I'll apologize. It'd be cool. <laughs> but like, remember when that one, like, bitch boy? <laughs> remember that, like, that one guy, you know, at the round table of the, of the, of the whatever, the, the higher ups, and he just decides to start, like, smack talking Vader. <laughs> what, what in the, like, how have you survived long enough to go up the ranks? Like, yeah. if that's your, if that's your survival instincts and you're in, like, yeah. <laughs> You're with the empire. I just, I mean, somebody would need to explain it to me. That to me, it's it's probably one of those guys that when he got so high up the rungs, they thought he's untouchable. Yeah, you know what I mean. One of those kind of dudes is always one, like you know, like the head Nazis, like when they're like there's Nazis and there's SS, but then there's fucking Goebbels and Himmel, and yeah. all these guys, and I bet you they're the kind of guys that would actually speak out turn against each other without fear of reprisal, in a sense, because of their own standing. And maybe that's what he taught. And Darth Vader's like, uh, no, I think I'm going to force choke you a little bit right about now. Because, dude, there's different levels to this Empire business. You're here in the same uniform as 12 other dudes. Look at me. I'm more machine than man. Yeah. I got a cape. <laughs> think I'm going to fucking deal with You think I'm going to take this shit? Force choke. Force choke. Yeah, force choke. I mean, uh... Force choke. Oh, my God. I, I, I think I'll be like. I find your lack of faith disturbing. Force choke. <laughs> you know what I, mean? I think I'd be like, you know, I'd be found dead of all erotic force talk asphyxiation. Uh, man, I'd be just fucking wrecking people's head. I walk by, and as I'm walking by, just briefly force choke them, like just so they won't even know if it happened. Like, or like, you know, like force choke them as they're eating, so that they're yeah. not sure if they just <laughs> swallowed a peanut <laughs> wrong or something like that. Like, or even like like the food that's in their mouth, just like nudge a tiny bit of it down before they're ready for it. <laughs> oh no, what happened? Oh no, it's terrible. Or just when people are shitting and raise their butt to push it out, push it back inside them. Oh, <laughs> imagine reaching through like the most powerful force in all of existence. And that's what you're doing with. It. Yeah. Are we? Are we writing a movie? I feel like we're writing. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think Darth Bay, you can't knock Darth Bay, like well, you had the, the the ship battle with um mm, uh, Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan, but there was it's a great shit. battle. Mm. It was a great battle in Return of the Jedi. Yeah, I thought like, again it didn't have that sleek like jumping all over the but I remember just being like you remember when Luke actually cuts off Vader's hand and gets do you mind? I love the fact that he just got to the point where he was just hammering down on him, yeah. where there was no skill involved, where he literally just endurance test. And he just kept yes. that and then just chopped off his arm. I thought that was mm. excellent. That's um, he went all in vengeance on him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Palpatine, of course, like having something above Vader and, yeah. and, and having it being this kind of meek looking man in kind of a robe it made him the most intimidating motherfucker. You know, like if somebody can show up looking like that and Darth Vader not only like respects him, but literally bends the knee, mm. you're like, fuck, what's this dude? Like this yeah. dude's the fucking shit. Like, yeah. And I thought all of that, you can't knock it. You can't knock it. He built up bad guys at god tier level. Yeah, that man, like, yeah, man, like you don't get any more legendary than Darth Vader and everything. You don't. Seen. Like you just don't and, and that's 45 years ago, and you still yeah. have You just yeah, exactly. And there's still like finding ways to include them in the narrative, like you know what I mean? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, the, the mask, just even just have the mask the mask like representing his legend. Yeah, just his legend. And to bring because he's, back as well, like you know, for yeah, because um, for the last Skywalker. Yeah, that was a great. <laughs> great <movie. laughs> what Everyone was that last one called? Force, right? What was the uh, Rise of Skywalker? Rise of Skywalker. Yeah, fucking dances with Skywalkers. Yeah, dances with Skywalkers. Yeah, uh, but um, yeah, like let's say, like the, the script is always the weakest part of a Star Wars movie for me, except like the originals probably had the strongest script out of all. Would you say the lore is the strongest? Yeah, the lore and the uh, the characters themselves, like is like and maybe that's because the embodiment of the actors created, like like Luke Skywalker, Mark Hamill, like when as soon as you see Mark Hamill, the first appearance of Luke Skywalker, such a likable guy, I get giddy every time. You know what I mean? Yeah. As soon as you see Harrison Ford and see them start interacting with Obi Wan and Luke Skywalker, and we see the cantina on Tatooine. I get giddy every time. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, uh, uh, then you start talking about the Millennium Falcon. Like, you know what I mean? He chuckle every single time. 
that's the thing. Like, it's just it's a pure nostalgia drug. These like movies, like well, oh, can, it's a nostalgia drug. Yeah, you're, you're onto something there. That's yeah, for damn sure. A hundred percent. You can point out its weaknesses left, right, and center, but like they're far outweighed by its positives and the strengths. Like, you know what I mean? Just like the Carrie Fisher as Leia. That's she was so far ahead of what like other female protagonists were doing in a lot of movies at the time. Apart yeah. from you know maybe Ripley because she was kicking ass in seventy nine, two years later, but um. Like you, you see her like you know shooting blasters and shit like that in the sequels and stuff like that. And she, becomes, and she was she was royalty. And yeah, she was she was in the foxhole. By the way, that was a bit of a lousy split up. Like then fucking Luke Skywalker get the short end of the stick like a motherfucker there, didn't he? Big was like time. we're going to leave you with uh, this uh, the Organa family who happen to be like uh, pretty much royalty. And um, uh, Luke, yeah, you're going go to go uh, to check my notes. Uh, tattoo weed. I think you're going to be a literal dirt farmer. Yeah, I'm not sure what the point of that is. Yeah, goddamn, you're, but you're going to farm dirt. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like uh, one, one thing as well, if you watch them close together, you get to see like what happened to Mark Hamill's face in between um, New Hope and Empire Strikes Back. He was in a car crash or something. And that's why in the, the start of it on Hot, he gets more well, beaten the shit out of. Uh, oh. Yeah, and that's why probably why he became Leia's brother. Oh. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's sort of God. That's why his nose is like all kind of different. And like that's why he looks like the Mark Hamill. I thought he like it's so funny when you go back and you see Star Wars Part 1 and you're just like, that's not Mark Hamill. And you see Part 2, there's yeah. Mark Hamill. That's Mark Hamill, yeah, I know. It's funny, I, 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 worked, I worked with a guy and he was, he's, he's cerebral palsy, so, uh, so he had a carer that, that used to care for him and he used to come in, so I'd only see him briefly. Yeah. But he came in one day and he had broke his nose so severely that yeah. I like stood up to stop him from leaving with the guy I worked with who had the cerebral palsy. Yeah. I was like, the fuck are you? And why are you trying to wheelchair that this guy out here? Like, I mean, I just like it was I just felt like I had to. Yeah. And it was just like he was a real dub, you know. It's fucking yeah. Paul, man. What's your problem? Yeah. And I was going, no, man. And it was just that it, it's just weird how one like to ask Jennifer Gray. Yeah. That one feature, and it just like who is that? Who is that? It's absolutely bizarre. But you're right. And you know what? Something was off. And I cut I yeah. just thought, you know, like there's six years, yeah. 77 to 83, I think. Well, between the sequel and the first one, was it? Uh, no, sorry, between Return of the Jedi. Yeah. So when I was when I was kind of noticing it in Return of the Jedi, I know it's not the first sequel, but I was kind of it just kind of dawned on me. I was like, mm. does because like just that fresh baby face when you see him first. Yeah. I was like, is it just that he's has he changed over these films, or is it just that he's yeah. you know six years have passed and time is time? But yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, his nose is all like messed up in part two. It seems to be much better in part three. Probably got some plastic surgery in between because it was pretty fresh. Some of that, you know some of that early eighties plastic surgery, the good you know stuff, I mean? the good stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Some of the Mexican supplements. You know, they get a mask and they just gas hairspray into, into the pass out. <laughs> yeah, the good. That would, that would, <laughs> that's what I want. Solvents? They're giving us solvents in the eighties. <laughs> <laughs> well, but uh, I, I, I write this I, down I, on my notes. Solvents from the eighties. If I was asking, research. I know we don't. Like, what do you think was? Um, what do you think was the strongest? Like, what thing did you, you know, go back and you're looking at? It, and for the first time ever as well, for me, I'm looking mm. at it with a critical eye. I'm not just yeah. like throwing on Star Wars or stumbling across the TV where Star yeah. Wars is on. What What is just the undeniable, I tip my cap, I have nothing to say, you win. Oh, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's something touched on earlier. It's the characters themselves. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there's like, there's no... Few, there's very few characters, if any, that are more like they're so iconic. Like you look at Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, but you Darth look at C three PO, yeah, like the cowardly, the whole like he's mm. like he has the language, human thing. cyborg relations. Yeah, he has the, 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 the he speak six. He's not. He's languages. not a cyborg though. Uh, a pure robot. Sorry, but he's not a cyborg. No, no, I'm just saying. Like he says, human. Doesn't he say human cyborg relations, or does he say human android relations? I don't know. Because he's not cyborg, isn't he? He's cyborg. He's not, no, 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 no. He's he's he's, he's, he's all wires. He's not. Yeah. Um. But he he is a great character. Mm. You no, know, I, and he also I also thought he kind R2 of R2D2. It like becomes like of course R2D2 just beeps and boops, and he was an yeah. absolutely excellent character. Mm. He was pivotal. Yeah, it'd be amazing I, if to translate and it's just like, hey, you see, Trippio. Uh, I don't think we should go that way because I think Luke and I would get into danger. What do you think, old chum? And it just, <laughs> kind of just comes out with beep beep boop beep. Oh, well, C3PO. And they hated mm. each other, and that always mm. makes me sad. <laughs> they act like there was the one, like, you know, Baker who play, uh, was always like kind of like 
bit of a cheeky chap, you know, mm. like up for a joke. And the other guy was a little bit more heighty tighty. And uh, they You're just, right, do you... yeah, well, am I? I like to think yeah. I'm not. I have no oh. idea what's going on right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so <high. laughs> Um, But uh, Anthony, Anthony Daniels, yeah, and Kenny Baker, they just, mm. and it makes it sad. And also knowing that our R2D2 had a lot of like, nudie females cutouts inside the head just to keep Kenny Baker like occupied. Yeah. Well that's just yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a lot of like page tree girls. Do you say they hate each other in real life? In real life, Kenny Baker and Anthony Donald. Oh, because yeah. I was like, when you were like, they hate each other, and that made me sad. And I was like, oh no, I mean Anthony Daniels and Kenny Baker. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Was, when you said that first, yeah, when you said that first, I was like, or do you two see two people hate each other? And I'm like explain <laughs> you know what I mean? like, for a second there as I said I didn't know what was going on man I imagine I was able to speak to beeps and boops <laughs> Just like, you know, like, I know. sometimes you say you can speak beeps and boops but I don't think you can speak yeah, yeah, it's all about the inflection when he says it's all about the inflection yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but like the, the, just the man, the strength of the characters, like Chewbacca, hands like Han Solo, and the chemistry between even like a Wookiee and a fucking dude. Like that's the thing is like they always create a chemistry between the characters. Like Leia and Luke had great chemistry. Luke and Han had great chemistry. Uh, uh, Leia and Han had great chemistry. Fucking R two D two, C three PO had great chemistry. It's like that's the thing. Like you know, like the characters themselves and the lore you touched on, they're just the real strengths of this trilogy, and that's why it's a massive franchise now. It's why it's just like it's it's many many books and many many comic books and many many films, eleven feature films. Like it's this prints its own money. You know what I mean? This this, this film is uh, eventually it was bastardized. I think to the point where it was an ATM machine. Yeah, it's just well, it's it's just that uh, it's strongest when it's made by people that really expect respect the uh, the the love. Though you knew there was yeah, love in that the, original trilogy. 100 percent, and even George Lucas himself didn't have the same love in maybe the prequel trilogy as he did in the orig- original trilogy but he respected it because it was his creation and I think the original the prequel trilogy that's why they've aged so well because they're so full of lore they're so full of cool stories and all this shit and like all the cool action and stuff like that and like if you look at the Mandalorian when you got John Favreau and Dave Filoni coming in Dave Filoni doing uh, Clone Wars and stuff like that if like, you have people that really respect the lore it's so rich it's like you said, that's the best thing about it like you know what I mean it's like very few films have so many iconic characters in one franchise. Like outside, if you think they're so iconic, you could put like Luke Skywalker's every bit as famous as Spider-Man, every bit as famous as Batman, every bit as famous as Superman. Han Solo's every bit as famous as any fucking other fucking smuggler, like or any kind of rogue at the time. He's as famous as Indiana Jones, which is played by Harrison Ford as well, but he's as famous like as any superhero. Like those names are synonymous with anybody. Even to this day, you can mention Han Solo anywhere across the world and they'd recognize him as quick as they would recognize Spider Man or Superman or Batman. And they're all within one franchise. I went to Comic Con and I seen mm. at least one or two Luke Skywalker's like kids who were born. Did you see I, the the lightsaber battles when you went to the DCC? Yes. <clears throat> interesting. Um, they were they interesting. weren't very good. They're in trolling, <laughs> I thought, man. <laughs> I also said that I was uh, I was being funny. Uh, <laughs> jokes. Uh, authentic laughter. <laughs> My but, beer is a slushy, and I'm genuinely devastated. Uh, did you even freeze for too long? Yep. Uh, rookie mistake. One time I did that, and uh, the the cap popped off it in Carlsberg. It's already Danish piss. Yeah, I was about to say that. Like, yeah, buying Carlsberg was your first mistake. <laughs> yeah, Terry. Right. I used to drink that in Budweiser a lot when I was younger, and now I drink a lot of Corona. Um, yeah, I love Corona. Uh, you sure when you were over my gaff a few times, we used to record in, in human existence towards one another. I used to drink, we used to make you drink Corona. I'm like Vin Diesel. You can drink whatever you want as long as it's Corona. You know, I'm all about family. I'm all about being a Vincent. You know what I mean? It's, it's, <laughs> it's who we are. Except really, I was born in Vincent. His name's Mark. But whatever. He gets to be in the council of Vincent. It's okay. It's a thing. He allows, it's mainly because we have star power. It's a whole, it's a whole thing. You know what and I mean? that explains Star Wars. <laughs> so the crux of it all was Star Wars. And you look at the Vin Diesel of it all. <laughs> But um, like you know, well, there was keeping it in the family. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah, that, like I, I think like why the originals were so cool though is when you get this 
first exposure to the Skywalker Lord and the, the legend behind it and how, like, even though, as I said, the writing doesn't really make sense because it feels like the, the story was made up as it went along. It doesn't feel like the three movies are mapped out because of the inconsistencies. It was like, oh, uh, technicality, technicality. I told you, I told you your father got killed by Darth Vader, but guess what? Uh, semantics. I'm big on semantics. Technically, what I said was that he, when he was became Darth Vader, the Anakin Skywalker no longer existed. So therefore, yeah. accordingly, that uh, yes, checking notes once more, that yes, he consumed him. Therefore, you could imagine, like, and that, Your Honor, is why. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you kind of don't know. Yeah, no. Yeah. You said he killed him. You fuck. <laughs> yeah. Because that's what I think part one was written, and then they started to change the story as it went along. And that's what's in the writing. <laughs> is the he killed him, stabbing mostly. Lots of stabbing. <laughs> and it's like, here's your father's sword. He would have wanted you to have this. Oh, the sword that he killed all those younglings with. Interesting gift. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh my god, you just kind of blew my mind there. Yeah, it's like what the hand is the hand? How could my hand was kind of red? Oh, stained in the blood of many younglings. Have at a champ. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like that's the weakest part of the entirety of the Star Wars saga. Apart from Rogue One, I think the rating's very tight in it. Uh, obviously, Mandalorian, of course, such a fucking great show. But like the writing is the weakest part, the inconsistencies in, in the, the timeline of the continuity outside of the strength of the lore and the characters themselves. It's fucking all over the place. And you see that so much, like when you watch them in such close uh, quarters, like we only watched uh, the prequel trilogy a few weeks ago and then we watched Solo and Rogue One and now we're watching, uh, just after watching the original trilogy and you watch them in close quarters and you see all these inconsistencies in the stories. And that's what really annoyed me about the original trilogy that like, and it's kind of what annoys me a lot about this franchise that its continuity is a bit muddled. It's a bit all over the place. And like, and then they're just like, they're trying to have, uh, retroactively um, change things. So like, oh no. And that's like something in a writer's room. Oh, he, he you could say he, he meant that he, because he consumed him, that he technically killed him. You know what I mean? It's just not the kind yeah. of thing that you look like you're trying to get out of a situation that you've written yourself into. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's and of course, I, I, get, I get how that shit like this ebbs and flows. And I guess like sometimes something becomes so big. Like yeah. I wouldn't be a thing of like, if you were starting, you can imagine starting something and kind of like, I'd ask big questions of myself that maybe I don't even have the answers to, but if it yeah. comes to it, I'd like to oh, think I'd be up for the challenge. It's a hundred percent. That's what writing is. That's what yeah. I found out. There's some things yeah. you have to ask yourself. Don't be questions. afraid. Don't be like, well, I don't know if this is going to uh, become anything. So maybe I'll kill it here in this last chapter, like kill it. Yeah. Or well, maybe you're killing it in the crib and maybe then mm-hmm. you're kind of like, Oh fuck dude. That's like, I'm so happy about my success, but I have got to reinvent the wheel in, uh, uh, in a very real way you know yeah. you do and you know like um and that's how game it's and that's how you get a game of thrones or something that that oh, that didn't have a last season and yeah uh, <laughs> yeah that but it's true season. but like sometimes it comes up short or not but like i do think Strange that this... they cancelled after seven seasons <laughs> it's really weird because like i felt like they were about to wrap it up it was a very successful show and i had a lot of plot lines and like stories and a lot of details that fleshed out characters and i just felt like it was going to get a fine season and they just cancelled it it was yeah. weird, but it obviously. was strange. Yeah, it was weird. That had never happened. And yeah, I yeah, never got an eight season. So weird. And that burning pain I feel yeah. in my heart well, is might hopefully be. just a heart attack. <laughs> um, what they call that a kiss the Westeros. <laughs> um, um I, I do I do think when you go back and look at these films that the enormity of them. Did you get that when you watch the three together and you go, Yeah, it's that wow. Was- yeah. Like he really did something. Yeah. Like he really, really did something. It's a moment in time. Like, like what, what was pop culture before and after Star Wars? It's that moment in time. It's like when the Lord of the Rings came out in the early 2000s. It's that moment in time. What was the pop culture like before Lord of the Rings and now after it? It's that thing that would be forever included in the, the pop culture and the zeitgeist. It's that more, as I said, it's like when you have a film like Alien in, in 1979, that moment in time for science fiction horror, everything comes before and after Alien. Like in science fiction, uh, you had it previously in the 60s with a 2001 Space Odyssey. He's got these landmark moments that just show you the depth that, uh, that you can have and the, uh, the, the kind of fucking width and the kind of scale and scope of a story that could take place in deep space. And that's what Star Wars did. It told us like a, a story that 
we've never seen the scale of that at that state, like at any stage before that. Like, you know what I mean? It just shows you like what you can do where it incorporates all these different stories, all these different characters, all these different kind of crossover mythologies where you have almost like science fiction magic and sorcery and this kind of Buddhism, like we talk about this religious kind of oneism with the world combined with this futuristic technology and shit like that. And, and like lightsabers and all this, it's just like such an odd mixture of subgenres and scientific and like fucking storylines and shit that like it's crazy that it worked but it works so fucking well man like it's so unique and you know and there was nothing it, it set the tone and there's been nothing really like it it's tried to expand on itself yeah in fact that it was so it, it set the tone even just the human robot relationships the human alien relationships the fact that you can go why not just go across the galaxy to somewhere it's so far away but also why not a long time ago like we're just talking about yeah everything could be different like you don't even have to have a fresh slate like what if this historical event did you know like what i can't think of that show what's a show if the nazis had won and it shows america and... oh amazing show it's called man high castle i never actually watched it so uh, good is books, it really good so, yeah, yeah i've heard that it's good. been it's been recommended to me i'll get to it um but this one kind of takes it like infinitely further and go no you don't even have to do that you don't have to what if it you could just go blank slay anything you want mm-hmm. any time in history yeah. anywhere in the universe and 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 then it did it and it did it and it did it so well like nobody ever uses does anybody ever actually really use the word human in this at all yeah i don't even how do call jabba a human does he call jabba a human remember i said it to you earlier, yeah, i know you were saying it earlier but i didn't know if you were taking the piss no no he literally says it to him that's what i'm saying because that was he was originally human he goes when he was leaving he says to him uh, jabba you're a wonderful human being <laughs> so he literally says that to him and I'm just like okay could not figure it out how to edit that out no <laughs> like, you know what I mean it's like you spend a lot of money fucking adding all these aliens and you know what I mean yeah I I, 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 I there'll never be anything like it though because I, I do think that we've seen some really great things it's been a golden age of television a golden age of cinema in many ways and yeah. um, but this will always kind of have this zeitgeist moment where mm. it brought kind of medieval mythology into the future placed it in the past across the galaxy then brought in uh, artificial intelligence and aliens mm. and told a story that kind of related back to world war ii and yeah. even though i don't even disagree with you that sometimes the writing wasn't up to par but when you kind of look at the the, the, the that's the micro if you look at the macro you're kind yeah. of thinking fucking hell man well done that's like, what I'm saying. Well like, done. All the different moving parts that they mix together, it makes no sense that would be so good, but yeah, it is. Like, it just is. Yeah. yeah. And that's what I think. Like when Bob Fett came in, it was like, who's Bob Fett? Why, why, like, why are you bringing this card in? Like, oh, oh, yeah, no, I, I get that. Okay. Yeah. The, did they ever they call have. him Boba Fett in that movie? Did it? Did, no, no, no. They just, just call just, him Bounty Hunter, don't they? Bounty Hunter, yeah. But it was like, yeah, of course I get that. Jabba Hutt, like the business of smuggling and running guns and yeah. he'd have mercenaries. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. Mm. Han Solo pissed him off. That makes absolute fucking sense to yeah, me. Yeah, that like, scene yeah. with the, the carbonate is fucking classic. Yeah. It's legendary as well. I mean, there's, so, there's so many legendary moments in these fucking movies. Like, I think these three, I, I don't think you can throw at me any um, trilogy and just say it had more iconic moments than the, the original Star Wars trilogy. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, of one franchise to have so many iconic moments and so many iconic characters, almost unheard of, because all the other iconic characters named off earlier were all from individual properties. Spider-Man's his own thing, Superman's his own thing, Batman's his own thing. All these things existed once upon a time on their own, even within their great universe. But if you look at Star Wars, they have just three movies and to have Darth Vader, Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, Princess Leia, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Chewbacca, the Emperor Palpatine, uh, Lando Calrissian, to have all these characters exist within the space of a six-year span and whatever the the, the, uh, the trilogy was over, to have all that in three movies and to have all these mo- moments that became iconic over time. Uh, no, I am your father. Uh, I love you. Uh, I know. You know, these kind of things where you have like, oh, yeah, was it? that's not the terms of our agreement. Play, uh, it goes... Uh, I'm altering the terms of our agreement. Play a prayer, don't alter them further. I find your lack of faith disturbing. You know what I mean? Like, like that, oh, the agreement one, I completely forgot about that. You know what I mean? I, I say not only have I changed the agreement, you should be happy if I just leave it at that. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, like, what being bitched at, like, you know. And that, yeah, and that, and that, that, he did that so well. Yeah. I, I refuse to even enter yeah. into a debate about how well 
and bitches got slapped by um Darth Vader. Like yeah, Darth he's, Vader. he's terrifying. Like that's what, yeah. like he is terrifying. Anytime Darth Vader's on screen and that, like, right? And I know it's not a horror, but like we've spoken about this before. But imagine being in the room with what? someone with that kind of power at their hand. Oh yeah, you know, like we, I always say, like, what is horror? And I, I mean, God, I, I can't, I can't think of better words. So I'm just going to say it, but it's that, it's a vibe. It's that, yeah. it's that, like, up against something that's so absolutely terrifying. That could be a scream. That could be a scream situation where somebody's cut the lines and somebody's on the phone torturing you and they bust through the window. Yeah. But it could be, and it could be like omnipotent evil, like Hellraiser. Yeah. But like, and Darth Vader does slip into that darkness there. Yeah, like you're, you live at his whim, mm. and he's not exactly, you know, he's not exactly like um, a kind soul. Yeah, he's you not know what I mean. Like, of course, and that's that's what horror is. I mean, like, horror is the idea <laughs> of you being killed horribly, and yeah. you're watching people. You know, what I mean, in a safe way, and that's what that's not, what horror is. Not and, even and, that, and it horror right is, into it. Horror for me is the sense of powerlessness. I, I, well said. You know what I mean, like where you have no ability to change the situation. Or no, you no. Well said. I, I absolutely can see that point. That you know, that's it, that's it, but very and, succinctly, but very yeah, simply. And that's yeah. what Darth Vader is in any situation. It's like that dude earlier on, as we talked about. He's probably like the top eight in the, in the top ten of people in terms of power in the empire. Yeah, and he starts mounting off to Darth Vader, and Darth Vader's like, okay, and he just starts force choking him. It's like you like that's the kind of power he wields. It's like you were like it's kind of like when Mister Manhattan or sorry Doctor Manhattan says to Osmandis in um the watch in the Watchman like you know what I mean? It's like you were the smart the the smartest man in the world has the same uh, level of threat to me or something as the smartest ant. You know that kind yeah. of thing where you're like you're like the kind of level of power he reaches. And you're like, absolutely right. And that's it. Like in, in, when you're in when Darth Vader is even aware of you. Because we've seen him choke somebody through from one ship to the other yeah. or something, at least over some distance. Yeah. Um, you're e- you're alive either because you're of use to him or because you're beneath his nose and absolutely nothing in between. Yeah, man. Can I can I and, pull, up, pull up one point? Go ahead. If I'm going to ambush you and you're a Darth Vader, right? you're Darth Vader, I'm Luke Skywalker. No, actually, cool, cool. I, I'm Han Solo, right? Um, and you're Darth Vader, and no, I'm no, being... no, 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 you're Han Solo, and you got a real big dick. No, no, because it works better for the scenario. Okay, go uh, right, right. I'm Han Solo, and I got this mission. I'm bringing Princess Leia, I'm bringing Chewbacca, and we're going to ambush, and we're going to attack the Death Star. We're going to attack some fucking red uh, Empire base that we know Darth Vader's on. Who do we always keep bringing? The one person we wouldn't definitely not bring is the one person that's technically linked to Darth Vader. Of course, we'd never do that. We'd never do that. Of course, we wouldn't. Does the crew I'd pick would ever have? The one person I know in the entire universe that's all like telepathically linked to that. I'm like, no, they're like, Luke, do you want to go on this ambush mission? We're going to attack this dude you're telepathically linked to. And yeah. Every time they get caught, because Darth Vader's like, oh, I feel a disturbance in the force. And it's, it's like, oh, wait, my son's over there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you're not wrong, though. Yeah, but like, there's loads of times to go to ambush and to bring Luke along. And even Luke says it. It's like, I jeopardize the mission. Like, nah, you're cool. Luke, come along. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, it's just like, that's the one thing that annoyed me the most. What do you think of that? Like, yeah, I actually, you're right. It is, it is, uh, yeah, no, it makes, you know what? I, 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 my brain is absolutely blank. I can make no sense of that. Yeah. Like, the, 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 the people, again, once he has this awareness of you, you, you are, absolutely absolutely like under you are in huge danger and we're just nobodies he's never known us he's never been near us we'll just be like there Mm. but like you this like like also like he's this incredibly powerful thing although i will say that it does play out in such a way where darth vader wants to go and face him as opposed to having him blown out of the sky yeah because he wants to turn him because he wants to turn him like yeah. yeah That's what I thought was really cool, though, because immediately when he finds out that he's his son, that he does have that bit of humanity straight away, because he's like, oh, I want to save him. It's like, how can I bring him into the fold? You know what I mean? Like, like that's uh, kind of was the first little bit of glimpse of humanity in him, though, wasn't it? That immediately he didn't want to kill Luke. That he's like, as soon as he found out that he had a son, that he wanted to bring him into the fold. You know what I mean? Not understanding that the rule of two means he would have to die. But whatever, Dart. Jesus, dude, read your lore. Read your lore. <laughs> no, but like no, like like out of all the trilogy, like which one did you like? Do you think Empire Strikes Back's the best because it was such a uh uh departure having the bad guys win and having that set up like the Return of the Jedi and even though like you know what I mean who when they say Return of the Jedi you think to be more than two wouldn't you yeah yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> or, or, or one singular, like one or the other, yeah. you know, like rising as a power. I have to say, like, I think because it had the benefit of, let's just say there's been one story, and you know when you're writing a story that there's obviously a begin, middle, and end, and mm. when you get to sit look nice right there in the middle, where you don't have to worry about answering a lot of the questions, and you also don't have to worry about building a lot of the characters, mm. where you just get to actually just get into it. And that's what the second film did. Yeah. And then I I also think it's the greatest film, but I also think that... Well, the greatest if, let's just say, exactly, but I mean, let's just say if they had three different directors. Let's just say you're a world-class director, exactly mm. as good as the other two guys in the room. Mm. And if you're sitting there kind of going, right, so Vinny, you're going to direct the first one. Mm. Noel, you're going to direct the second one. I would go, yes! Mm. In my head, you know what I mean? Like, I would go, okay, because I'm not the person who's going to have to see if they... The, the final showdown with Vader and Luke works um, and, and the destruction of the empire. And I'm not going to have to be the person who kind of like sets these people on their journey and builds yeah. up their characters. So I do think it had the benefit of that, mm. but I also think it, so I do, but I, but undeniably the best of the three films. Yeah, and, 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 and when I was growing up, I used to think <coughs> Return of the Jedi. And I think it was just because the heroes, the, the good guys win. Yeah. The good guys win the death of mm. Palpatine apparently I grew, yeah. up, I grew up thinking the death of Palpatine yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know getting thrown down like in giant endless fucking canyons just means nothing in this world like, yes yeah, Dark Maul and Palpatine Dark Maul got cut in half and thrown in Palpatine yeah, yeah, Dark Maul got cut in half and Palpatine got thrown down it was some sort of energy generator like it yeah. was literally just <laughs> they've been thrown into a volcano yeah uh, but no whatever okay fine is there? Ah, oh, Malde, maybe not. So even Boba Fett he gets thrown into a fucking Sarlacc pit and eaten, and just he has a show no. now. No, you you chopped her head off and you pickled her head and you said, "There, he's dead in that pickle jar. Yeah. That pickled head is his head. Yeah. That might do it." Mm-hmm. Or whatever happened to Luke's uncle, the the the, the skeleton out okay, in the uh, jungle. Yeah, man. One night I laughed my ass off when um. Do you remember when they were investigating um? Pretty much. Do you remember in part one where they're on Tatooine and they get uh R two D two and C three PO. And um, the the Jawas that the bite them off get attacked and killed, and um, he's like, "Oh, there must have been stormtroopers. These shots are so precise; they could only be done by a stormtrooper." <laughs> like, when did the whole like missing thing come out? Like, <clears throat> like, you know, everybody nowadays is like, stormtroopers can't hit anything. It's like, why? Where's the deviation from uh, a New Hope? to uh, Empire Strikes Back and then Return to Jedi and the kind of lore is going on the Star Troopers can't hit shit when like in part one they're like oh this is so precise it's going to be done by a Star Star Trooper and later on in that scene it's totally disturbing where Luke comes back after finding his father or his uncle's dead his whole family's been roasted life comes back and there's C-3PO with like a pile of Jawas set on fire and he's just carrying dead Jawas to the fucking pile and he's just chucking them on (laughs) (laughs) I'm like this is a kids movie (laughs) You know what I mean? You kind of forget those darkness in the first. You do, time. you do, and especially when you look at it all together, you get that that's the scope of it, mm. and it really just you kind of think like, wow, like well done and everything, but fuck me, son, dark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, we're, we're, we've hit the hour mark, Ben. How do yeah. you want to shut this shit out? Um, sorry, no. Before we get the fuck out of here, all right. But what is your overarching feeling? Like it's forty five years on since the start of Star Wars. This is the trilogy, like, like the burden at all. Like you won't have Solo without this. You don't have Rogue One without the Death Star plans. I don't even mean? think. I don't even think. I think you could branch out from the. I, I can't be proven, of course, but I think you could branch out from the Star Wars altogether. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I do think that this set the tone for an, an awful lot, a, a truly an awful lot. And mm. all I feel is just gratitude because he undeniably raised the bar. Yeah. Now, however you feel about it, with like for being forty five years in the future, imagine how. Like they uh, in 1977, they felt about a, a film from 1932. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like it's it's huge, it's huge, and the way we develop characters now and and uh, in really great films, it's very complex. And I do think that this this was like a watershed moment for me. It's like a there. I feel like there needed to be a Beatles and there needed to be a Led Zeppelin. They're they're the two bands I always go to, and I yeah. think there needed to be a Star Wars for entertainment. Oh. So mm. gratitude is my overall feeling. It really yeah. is like, and that, that's that's all jokes and all bullshit. It's like gratitude is my overall feeling. Yeah, because well, the, this guy dreamed something, and he made that shit in 1977. Man, that's beyond. Like he made it with these t- little Thai models and stuff. It's incredible. It's incredible what he did. 
Yeah, I'm oh just like the, the richness of the lore is just next level. Like, you know, most of the shit that was mentioned in the trilogy is spawn series or spawn novels. Like, you know what I mean? They mentioned the clone wars just like flippantly. And uh, and they get like we, we get attack of the clones, we get the, the clone war TV series, like the two of them. Like, you know, it's like they mentioned little things, and like you know, Boba Fett appears and he dies and he has a TV series now, and they mention like little things that always seem to spawn off and grow their own legs. And that's the sign of really rich mythology and really rich lore that with these three movies, that even though they're so iconic in their own sense, that they set so many little seeds there for a greater oh, yeah. universe that yeah. it has created untold amounts of IP. Or like, I can't discussion. prove it. And I'm not I'm not putting down anyone because maybe there would have been. But I look at stuff like Halo, which is a, a game series I'm so into and, yeah. and I'm. I've been reading a lot of the lore lately. I've kind of gone down a rabbit hole and it's amazing and I love it. And I'm wondering like, would there have been? Because I, I think he was just like, yeah, it's 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 uh, it's ambitious what I'm doing. And yeah, like the technology, the special effects, they might not be there, but I'll be damned if I'm not going to try. Yeah. And if that's not the, if that's not the takeaway from, from fucking Star Wars, I know the takeaway should be in the story, but the takeaway is like, fuck it, just do yeah. it. Yeah. That, that then I don't know what it is. Yeah, because that's pretty much what Luke Skywalker's all about, really, wasn't it? And it really I, I fucking it was, like, yeah. yeah. It's just like, that's the treat. Like, they're just like, fuck it. There's no one else going to do it. I better do it. I can only train you if you're a child or if we go for a run in the woods. <laughs> yeah. You'd either take 20 years to train or 20 minutes. Yeah. We never even <laughs> mentioned Yoda. Yoda, yeah. as I like to call him. Yeah, man, man, fucking, man. As I said, so many iconic characters. Like we nearly forgot to mention about Yoda and the Dig of a System. And... No, we a hundred percent forgot to mention. Yoda. Yeah, that's, no, we, that's what's... we nearly did because we're talking about them now. Wow. Well, there you go. You well, know, they're now. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like so, like there's just so much fucking awesome shit about him, man. Like Yoda, like he, we, like we just got to see him then in the prequel series, and like characters that are in this, like only for moments at a time become iconic and spawn their own stories left, right, and center. Like, and that's that's what the best thing about Star Wars is that like like underneath the layer of the main characters, there's just still so many iconic characters, like you know what I mean? That, and very few franchises have that throughout the entire like you can run down through Luke, Han, Leia, Darth Vader, and you can run through like the secondary characters, and then you have Yoda and you have Palpatine, and then you run down and you have like like Lando Calrissian and Chewbacca and R2 D2, C Tripio. Like there's, there's very few franchises that give birth to so many fucking iconic characters, and I said it before, and like I, I wouldn't it. even be able to come up with all the cool names. Yeah, that's you know how, what I mean. You know, like, that's... That, you know what I mean. So, like, without a shadow of a doubt, like it's they're the strongest group in the movies of all the Star Wars movies yeah. because you know what I mean. Like that's undeniable, but like, and its weaknesses are there for all to see or whatever. But still, the the legacy it's left behind, man, is untouchable, man. And that's the thing about Star Wars that it's got a true fucking legacy that unfortunately it hasn't expanded at times in the way we wanted to. But it has given so much room for expansion. So little does. So yeah. little does. Yeah, it's just the way it is. Um. But like, yeah, let's let's just get the fuck out here, like, because yeah. that, that's that's Star Wars. Everybody knows Star Wars. We don't need to tell them what they already know. Um, notice what I said at the end of the episode. Hopefully. No, no, we did it first, man. Yeah, yeah we, we did, did it first. Uh, yeah. Dave Bruce, recording 18th of May, May 2022. First time <laughs> Star Wars has ever been talked about. Yeah, it's what we do. We did it, guys. We did it. We did it. We made it to the moon. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to be taking us out. <laughs> but uh, all right, folks, I'm your host on screen. I'm your host on TV. And that's Dark Side of the Moon. That was Star Wars from fucking Galaxy Far, Far Away, leaving this legacy in all your faces. You know what I'm saying? Whether you like it or not. Yeah, light side, dark side, whatever is all I'm saying. It's on my good side. Something, something dark side. And you know, over here, what we like the best, you know what I'm saying? We like that dark side. So we're all like about side, we like we like it dark because we like unlimited power. <laughs> yeah. All right, I want to say two in the pink, one in the dark side. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> See you next time, motherfuckers. Peace, peace. <laughs> Sickening. I'm a god. You're a man. This is the word of dark side.